This is the Business Experience Show, where we talk to entrepreneurs about the challenges and successes of starting, owning, or operating a business. Welcome back to the Business Experience Show with Cole Smith and Joel Dorsey. I'm your host, Lisa Caprelli. Our next guest is extraordinary. And get this, he's only 15 years old. I had the privilege of meeting him at a recent TEDx conference where he was a guest speaker. He's the 2012 Grand Prize winner of the Intel International Science and Engineer Fair. He created an inexpensive and highly effective method to detect early stages of pancreatic and other cancers. He has received a slew of prestigious awards. Welcome, Jack and Draka. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Awesome. Hey, how you doing there, Jack? This is Joe. Uh, I'd like to ask you, uh, tell, me, tell me a little bit about what, what you invented and, and your inspiration for it. So I first got interested in pancreatic cancer because a close family friend actually passed due to the disease. And then what I realized is that I'd known a ton of people that had died of pancreatic cancer. So I went online and I found that 85% of all pancreatic cancers are diagnosed late when someone has less than a 2% chance of survival. And so I was like, there has to be a better way than the current way we are doing it because the current method of detection, it misses 30% of all pancreatic cancers and costs $800 and Thanks. is never really ordered. And so then what I did is I've developed a novel paper sensor that costs three cents takes five minutes to run, and diagnose pancreatic, ovarian, and lung cancer. And also, it's 168 times faster, over 26,000 times less expensive, and over 400 times more sensitive than the current gold standard. Wow. I'm sorry, did you say pancreatic, lung, and ovarian cancer? Yes. Wow. It can detect pancreatic, ovarian, and lung cancer. How, how was it that uh, the Internet helped you after you created the, uh, um, uh, your product? Well, actually, the Internet has really helped me throughout the entire process with just doing a ton of research on Google and, like, Wikipedia I use sometimes. And it's just an invaluable resource for finding information that I typically wouldn't have access to. And what it's really taught me is that you don't really have to be, like, a professor or someone with multiple degrees in different fields in order to have your ideas valued. It's just your ideas that count on the internet. How, how did you know what to start Googling or, or researching? Where did you get your starting point? What did you, I'm, I'm surely you had other background in biology in school? Um, well, actually at the time I started researching this, I was in a high school biology class in eighth grade. Wow. <laughs> and so I didn't really know that much about biology. So essentially what I did is I looked up pancreatic cancer statistics. And then from there what happened is I started looking at how we currently detect pancreatic cancer, which is the detection of this one protein in your blood. However, that protein doesn't work too well. It's like not that reliable of a biomarker of these cancers. And so then I actually started searching through a database of over 8,000 different proteins mm -hmm. that I found online. And finally, on the 4,000th try, I found a reliable protein. And then from there, I just found internet articles all in the stuff, and I just kind of connected the dots one day in biology class. Wait, wait. How, how much time did it take you to do this research? I mean, it sounds like when you think of how much, uh, uh, what an impact it's going to make, did it take you months, days, years? You, you, sounds like you got a lot of patience. <laughs> So um, this research, the preliminary research, like finding the biomarker and coming with, up with the idea, took me about a year. Okay. Jeez. And then from there what happened is I went on this, like, seven-month journey of actually creating the sensor in the lab. Is that where you found the uh, nanotubes at that particular point during your research? Yeah, I actually had previously known about carbon nanotubes just because I'm really already interested in science. And so essentially what happened is I thought maybe I could apply these to this problem that I'm having with detecting this protein. And then what happened actually is it was in biology class. I had taken in an article on these carbon nanotubes. Okay, Jack, I have to tell you for the rest of us, what does that mean? Carbon nanotubes. <laughs> okay, carbon nanotube. Yeah, yeah. So a uh, carbon nanotube, just imagine it as a really long, thin pipe of carbon. Okay. 
And it's one fifty thousandth the diameter of your hair. Okay. Jeez. And it has these incredible properties. Like they're the superheroes of material science. It's super, super cool. And so I was actually just reading about the, their amazing properties in biology class when we were learning about these things. And they're called antibodies. Okay. And an antibody is essentially something, imagine it like a lock and key. It only reacts with a specific protein. In this case, the protein that I had found that was present when you had pancreatic ovarian or lung cancer. And then basically just connected the dots in biology class and thought, hey, this idea might work. And then I basically contacted about 200 different people at Johns Hopkins University and the National Institutes of Health. Okay. Essentially, anyone that had anything to do with pancreatic cancer. And then I had expected that I would get tons of positive feedback. But then what happened is over the course of a month, I actually got 199 rejections out of the 200 I sent and one lukewarm maybe. Welcome to the world of being an entrepreneur. (laughs) Persistent. How did you get to the lab each day? You were not even old enough to drive. Well, actually, that was so, what's so convenient about um, the lab I was working in is that it's maybe 10 minutes away from my high school. So when I get off of school, I basically have my mom drive me to Johns Hopkins every day. Pretty cool. But my um, lab mentor, he joked that this kid has found a new way to detect cancer, but he still has braces and can't drive. <laughs> so well, do you wake up every day that you're on this mission to detect cancer? And is that one of your goals right now? Um, well, what really motivates me with this project is how 100 people die of pancreatic cancer every single day. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so to me, it's really thinking... Every single day that I put in work at the lab, even though I might be discouraged or anything, I know I'm working towards this, like saving 100 people in yeah. that one day. That's awesome. But, but your detection test also detects other cancers besides pancreatic. Yes. Okay. Ovarian and lung cancer, as well as several other cancers, that, like, such as mesothelioma and several other ones. And so this could also potentially be used for a variety of other diseases. And so it would really revolutionize cancer diagnosis and disease diagnosis. Mm -hmm. But in addition, what I found is that this sensor, it can monitor your levels of this protein in your blood over the course of your treatment, such that, like, say you're getting chemotherapy, it can monitor how effective your chemotherapy is and whether you're building a resistance to that chemotherapy, as well as looking if your surgery was a success and whether you're going to recur with pancreatic cancer. Jack, all, all this development and all of the different things that you're working on to create this product, are you looking at creating a product and licensing it to someone else, uh, creating a company? What, what, what are your plans and how do you see that as the next step in your, your business? So essentially what has happened so far is I have a patent in the U.S. and the international patent is pending. And so what's going to happen is, unfortunately, international patents cost a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Once you go into litigation and translation fees in all of the different countries, fees can build up to like well over a million dollars. And I am, after all, only 15. <laughs> and also, you I can don't... do it. Like, not in your piggy bank. <laughs> I, I have to stop and say that his early detection test, when you Googled your name, Jack Andreka, uh, it comes out that you beat billion dollar pharmaceutical companies with your test that cost as little as four pennies, correct? Yeah. Okay. Look, looks like to me the pharmaceutical companies aren't going to want you out there. <laughs> what are you going to do about that? Yeah, but beyond, you know what, you know what, Jack. Beyond that, at 15 years old, okay, uh, and you're you're out doing the the pharmaceutical companies, you're you're doing all these m- remarkable things. I'm just baffled by it. Uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself. You know, you're you're speaking right now like like a 30 year old uh, sitting in front of you know like Steve Jobs you're announcing. <laughs> what uh, what did you get to, so adapted at, at at public speaking? Well, actually, that's a kind of funny thing about a bunch of ISAF winners. Like, for example, there is one um, girl that won ISAF, won big at ISAF a few years ago, and she actually became interested in science because what she found is that she couldn't quite fit in a science class in her, like, junior year, so she took a science research class, got hooked on science, 
but she had already done like musical theater and acting. Mm-hmm. So a bunch of the winners do like musical theater, acting, or like just a ton of different ones of those like already public performances. And so you really have to be adaptive towards like speaking and also be energetic and entertaining. And so that's, I was back way back in fifth grade. I used to do musical theater. Wow. Wow. One th- and uh, tell me about, I read uh, your re- Wikipedia, uh, Jack and Draca at 15 years old is on Wikipedia. I read something <laughs> that you sat around with your family instead of watching television. You were learning about science. Tell us about that yeah. story. Well, I actually became interested in science at the age of three because my parents gave me and my brother this little like plastic waterway, like it's this plastic river. Mm-hmm. And we would essentially just play around in that all day. Like, we would throw a brick in and, like, see what happened to the water flow. And so that was some pretty, like, preliminary, like, scientific inquiry, kind of. (laughs) And then over the course of a few years, I, like, kind of refined my interest in science. And in sixth grade, I did my first science fair at my middle school. And ever since then, I caught the bug, basically, and now I just keep doing science there. And my family... Science is a bit in my family. Well, it's really in my family because my brother, two years ago, he went to ISAF and he won a $96,000 scholarship. Nice. Wait a minute, Jack. Okay, I'm sorry to cut and interrupt you. I got a young daughter who's, uh, you know, five years old. How do I get her involved? Because right now she's all over the place. (laughs) How do I get her focused on something like that? Good question. Well, actually, the funny thing about children is that like in kids is that all of them are actually interested in science okay. but kind of you just have to like really nurture that interest and keep them interested in like curiosity and make it like just show them like how you can succeed with it and how it's really cool like all these really cool applicable scientific experiments and that's what my parents did, and I love science. <laughs> I think instead of reading about Humpty Dumpty, I'm going to, re- I'm going to be reading her, her uh, these uh, things about Jack uh, and Drake here. <laughs> so, so, Jack, how did you end up getting in front of the, the United States Congress? Um, actually, what happened is that's for Pancreatic Advocacy Day. And so because I'm really into pancreatic cancer now, and so what happened is I got a special invitation to go to Advocacy Day on the Hill, and I was speaking before a bunch of delegates for the passing of this bill. Wow. So I, I kind of want to circle back before we take our break um, about your the licensing. I mean, you've created this product. How, how do you see creating your business and licensing this? I mean, you're looking for a million dollars for patent. I mean, you don't want to give your idea out or you don't want it to be seen. And, uh, you know, most of us here are on a business and we want to keep as things uh, uh, as private as possible uh, or somebody else is going to get that. How do you plan on using licensing to build your organization or, or are you going to be doing that? Um, I probably will be licensing because I am 15 years old and I want to go like homecoming and prom. <laughs> Good and for you. <laughs> so, like, what's going to happen really is I want to license it out to a company And maybe have a bit of involvement in it. But what would happen is in the licensing agreement, I would essentially put different, like, clauses in there that would really motivate a company to essentially make sure this gets to market. Like, for example, you could have, like, milestone fees, something like that, such that they're kind of, like, having to go towards development. And then also you can revoke your license and give it instead to a different company. Well, you... Jack, I'm not you, going to be selling it. Right. Well, you just set expectations for whatever that licensing agreement's going to be for yourself and that company. If they're going to take it, you don't want them to shelve it. Mm-hmm. We, and, uh, and uh, gentlemen, we've got to take a quick break. We'll be right back. For more information about Jack and Drake, you can go to thebusinessexperienceshow.com, follow us on Facebook or Twitter. You're listening to The Business Experience Show on Angels AM 830 KLAA. We'll be right back with Jack and Drake. Is your business having a difficult time in today's market? If you offer a great product or service, but are struggling with tapping into a solid customer base, perhaps we can help. Or maybe you would just like to cut your losses and walk away. 
the marketing professionals from the Business Experience Show are considering turnaround opportunities with select businesses. If you feel that you can benefit, please contact us through thebusinessexperienceshow.com or call 949-415-8237. That's 949-415-8237. Welcome back to The Business Experience Show, where you can learn from others' experiences and successes in business. Welcome back to The Business Experience Show. I'm Lisa Caprelli. We have Cole Smith and Joel Dorsey. We're talking with Jack Andreka. And uh, have you been able to take the experience and the lessons that you've learned in creating this product uh, to directly help any of your peers? Um, yeah, I actually, because... Now Science Fair is mandatory for all of my um, fellow students at North Carolina in the 10th grade. And so essentially what happens is a bunch of them ask me for advice on this, and I'm more than glad to oblige because I just am really passionate about science, and I think it's really cool that people are finally getting into Science Fair. Well, at 15 years old with you know, another 80, 90, 100 years ahead of you with this, <laughs> uh, with this new research, what do, you want to, what do you want to be known for? Um... What I want to be known for is just helping people out and helping advance science okay. because I just really want to, as a career, to just be able to help impact people in, in a positive way. You've talked about STEM ed- education. Can you let us know what that is? So STEM education is essentially science, technology, engineering, math, and it really promotes the sciences. And why I really support this is because STEM education is the future of the U.S. if we want to succeed in the future. Yeah. Because what's happening is we've begun to slip in our scientific education. I think I just saw this interesting article that has ranked us at like 19 or 23 in the world. And so we have to get back up there, really, if we want to continue being one of the world's superpowers. Because I agree that was Heck, evident yeah. in the Cold War when, for example... That's where science helped us out become one of those superpowers. And we are always promoting science. Children gathered in cafeterias to watch, like, the moon landings and stuff, 1980s with computers. But now people, like, politicians are kind of popularizing the idea of anti-sciencism. That's incredible. No way. What do you say to people <laughs> who are naysayers with what, regards to what you do? Um, people who are naysayers, there's always going to be critics of you. Always. And regardless of what you do, and so I just kind of don't pay that much attention unless they're actually respected in the field. Hey, Jack, one of the things that, that being so young and creating this particular product, have, have you created mentors? Do you have people that are business-minded around you right now to kind of help you set up a, your organization, whether it's nonprofit, for-profit, so that when you do set this license up that you've got a way of, of receiving this income? Have you created a nice team around you? Yeah, actually, I was just out at Singularity University. Have you guys heard of that? No, I no. haven't. So essentially what it is, is it looks at exponentially increasing technologies like nanoscience, genetics, computers, all that stuff. And all the people, all the mentors there are really business-minded. Right. Like, for example, Pierre Diamond, this is one of the, um, the founder of the XPRIZE, who's one of the mentors there. And I just have kind of built a community in the Silicon Valley region where it's really nice where I can get a ton of business experience from. Hey, Jack, uh, let me ask you real quick. What do you think uh, or what does hard work mean to you? Hard work, it means like really the the secret to success because you can be like genius, like 200 and like bajillion IQ. (laughs) However, if you don't work hard, then that's absolutely useless because you have to apply yourself. And if you don't do that, then you're just wasting your talent. And that, to me, is the worst possible thing you could ever do. Jack, one of the things that I see that you're you're doing, and that's creating a brand for yourself. And it's not just knowledge and, and knowing how to do this, but it's in the speed in which you get there. So your brand is growing extremely well. Tell us how you're going to uh, protect that or what are you doing? Well, actually, what I'm doing now to continue on that trend is I'm competing in the Tricorder X Prize, which is a $10 million prize to create a medical device that can diagnose you better than a group of board-certified doctors. 
by just passing it over your skin, not taking any invasive samples, and making instant medical diagnosis. Jack, you have so much information to share, and our show's almost up. Thank you for being with us today. For more information about the Business Experience Show, Jack Andreka, who's only 15 years old, um, I got to meet you at the recent TEDx conference, and you've been such a darling and joy to work with. Uh, Jack, thank you for being with us. Any last words you want to say to our listeners? Um, Really just value science and just believe in yourself that you can do it regardless of where you come from. So thank you for having me on the show. Thank you. It's been great. great. Thanks for listening. Have a profitable week. For more information or to reach any of our guests or information, please go to thebusinessexperienceshow.com. This radio show is produced by Brian Gaps. Production assistants Ben Burke. Thanks to Cole Smith and Joel Dorsey. The music by Mike Werner. I'm Lisa Caprelli. Thanks for listening. See you next week on Angels Radio AM 830 KLAA.